So I don't have to tell you the world is facing an environmental crisis of absolutely epic proportions. Uh, this view of uh, Shanghai Riverfront, which is so beautiful, looks a lot like this on many days. Uh, a lot of it due to the way that we're producing energy and a lot of it due to the way that we uh, ignore sort of the, the, the outcome of how we generate energy. Increasingly, the world is, is looking for alternatives uh, in renewables, and of course, a major part of that is solar. As Vice President Gore uh, stated the other day, we're gonna make and install over 60 gigawatts this year. I myself have been in this business since 1979. I remember celebrating the first megawatt going in and how excited we were about that major milestone. As the costs have come down, and they've come down dramatically over these last 20 years, uh, we are seeing the adoption rate go up uh, just exponentially. Again, a statistic that was quoted on Wednesday is a system being installed in India every two minutes. I come from California where it's about every four minutes. Um, I see them everywhere. When you look at the cost of making solar modules, which is a major part of solar uh, installations, the highest cost uh, piece of that value chain is silicon. It still represents about 20% of the cost of making a module, and largely is made the same way it has been done for the last 50 years. Silicon for solar, or silicon for use in electronics, uh, which is how it was developed, it was originally developed by a company named Siemens, who I think you're all familiar with, uh, in the mid-60s, and it was developed for high-power electronics, fast speed, um, and super uh, design capabilities and performance for integrated circuits. It turns out that solar cells don't really need that. Solar cells are large diodes. What we need is reliability and continuous performance. In making silicon for uh, these applications, it consumes a tremendous amount of power. That's part of the cost. We convert metallurgical grade silicon to a gas and back to a solid again. Those transformations require an awful lot of energy to make that take place. At Silicor Materials, we're taking a very different approach to making silicon and reducing the cost uh, to nearly half of what it's been produced at traditionally. We're making use of the fact that aluminum sits next to silicon in the periodic table. And the way these two materials behave together is there is a natural affinity for the impurities in metallurgical grade silicon to move over into the aluminum. Our process is highly industrial. We borrow from the metals and mining industry heavily, so an awful lot of adaptive processes that are well understood and well commercialized. This is our plant in Toronto. Um, I like to say I've traded my light, white lab coat for wearing one of these suits now when I'm in the factory, but it represents for me the industrial nature of what we're doing and the capability of cost reduction. We will consume about two thirds less electricity per ton of material that we produce. Um, and that again is a significant part of producing this material and represents a significant way that we are reducing cost. If you look at silicon and you look at how it's deployed in, in solar modules, it comes in this form. This is a stack of pre-wafered wafers, if you will. Uh, we cast our material into big bricks, gets sliced into wafers, and that's further processed into solar cells, and that's what you see laminated into a module which are installed in solar farms and solar systems. So our material is directly substituted for materials that have been used uh, in prior uh, generations. The aluminum that we use is sold back to the aluminum industry and is used for strengthened products like airplane skins, uh, automotive engines and automotive wheels, has a part number specification. We like to say we rent the aluminum and it goes right back to the aluminum company um, and is used as uh, extensively for strengthened aluminum products. As I mentioned, we're able to cut the cost of solar uh, silicon dramatically. It's about half the cost of the traditional means, again, because we're not going through all of these thermodynamic changes of the material. Uh, and again, adapting uh, a lot of processes and industrial procedures that have been used for 100 years in the metals business. We've recently announced a partnership with Iceland. We're building, uh, we have a plant in Toronto, but we're building the first large commercial scale plant that will represent about 5% of the industry. Uh, in Iceland, and uh, that may not be an obvious choice to most people. It wasn't to me at the beginning, but they have uh, many things that make this uh, the right partnership. Low cost geothermal power, and just a quick statistic is solar modules pay back the energy embodied in them but in one year, and they last 30 years. So geothermal power from Iceland is gonna create 30 times its kilowatt hour uh, capacity, uh, sort of like a solar breeder, if you will. I like that um, kind of, equation where it comes out to an advantage. 
I would just wrap up by saying that as we uh, further reduce the cost of solar energy and solar electricity, and for us in particular partnership with Iceland as we make use of some of the infrastructure and energy advantages that that country has, uh, we will continue to deploy solar all over the world in, in all of the geographies. I don't think there's any stopping it. I would leave with one question as we work in the uh, breakout groups is, how can we continue to accelerate? This is, excuse me, one small piece of, of, of a way to do this, and there's many other opportunities, so I'd like to work on that with the group. Thank you.